Hey guys, today I want to show you how you can adjust different model of brake system. The first model of brakes is foot brakes, in which there are no hand brakes. If you move the pedal upside down, the wheel will break. This brake model has no adjustment. This brake model is mostly available in 12, 16 and 18 inch bikes and also in some 20, 24 and 26 inch sizes. Another model of brake is hand brake. This may be with one hand or both hands. This brake model is called caliper brakes or C brake. In this brake model, when you press the brake lever with your hand, the brake arms move inwards and are placed on the rim and the braking action is performed. Now, how can we adjust a braking system? In the handlebar section, you will see a cable adjustment barrel. Make sure the barrel adjustment cable is fully secured to the brake lever. Set it to the last step of adjustment or one less turn. Then make sure that the grooves of the barrel adjustment cable are not in one direction to prevent the cable from coming out of place. We also have a barrel adjustment cable at the bottom of the brake, which you also need to tighten. So far, we have adjusted the barrel adjustment cables. Next, we need to adjust the brake shoes or brake pads. If you look closely, you will see that the wheel has a rim and a tire. The brake pad must be on the rim when braking. Let's take a look at the pad and it's a starter. In this pad model, we have a washer and nut. If you look closely at the brake pad, you will see an appendage or mark. This part should be always be down. Also, the brake pad has a convex and concave curvature at the top. The convex part should be at the top to align with the bike ring. We use a 10 millimeter wrench to adjust. First, we put the brake pads in line with the rim. Be careful never to touch the tire as this will case the tire. To wear out and also reduce brake performance. When we are sure that the pad and the rim are in the same direction, you tighten the screw or not a little so that the pad is not able to move. 
Then hold the pen in place with your finger and tighten the knot. If we do not hold the pad, the pad will rotate along with the screw or knot. Do the same for the other side of the brake. To make sure that the pad is exactly on the ring, we press the brake arm by hand to place it on the wheel. Then we can see that the brake pad is on the rim or on the tire. For the next step, we need to adjust the cable anchor bolt. This anchor bolt is used to hold the brake cable. First, hold both brake arms from inside the rim using the two finger I have shown. Loosen the nut with the 10 millimeter wrench. Here I used uh, my own three way tool. When the screw loosen or not loosen, push the brake arm in with your finger. Pull the brake cable. Make sure the ferrule is in place on the barrel adjustment cable. Then tighten the anchor bolt. Make sure the wheel moves easily and that the brake pads are not attached to the rim. A distance of one or one to three millimeter is fine. Use the brake ten times to adjust the brake. I mean use the brake lever 10 times to adjust the brake. If the tire doesn't rotate easily, first make sure the wheel doesn't wrap. If the tire doesn't wrap, loosen the anchor bolt again and slightly increase the distance between the brake pad and the ring. If after tightening the anchor knot, you feel that the distance between the pad and the ring is large, now you can uh, adjust it by opening the barrel adjustment cable. Sometimes the brake do not work. If you look closely at the back of the brake, you will see a spring. This spring is to return the brake arm to, uh, to its original position after braking. To turn the spring in place, you can unscrew the anchor bolt and uh, replace the spring or do it with your hands or other tool. On the back of the fork, you can see the screw connecting the brake system to the body of the bike or to the fork of the bike. It has a thin washer and a wide washer. One side of which is a curved wide washer that must be placed on the fork during installation. When tightening the screw, make sure that it's closed exactly in the center. If you pay attention, you will see that by uh, tightening the screw, the brake system also rotate and 
um, it's not in the center. To tighten the screw, hold the brake system in the center by hand and then tighten the screw. The next model is the V-shaped brake, which is pressed from the top and bring the pads closer to the ring. As in the previous model, we tighten the barrel adjustment cable in the handle part, but there is no barrel adjustment cable in the lower part. To remove the brake cable, you can release the cable by pushing the brake arms inwards or vice versa. Make sure that the brake hose is in place and not is any other way. To adjust the pads, we act as before. We use a 5 or 6 mm Allen wrench instead of the 10 mm wrench to the adjust the pads. Loosen the anchor bolt, pull the brake cable, press the brake arms inward with two fingers, tighten the anchor bolt and make sure the anchor bolt is fully tightened. If only one of the brake arms moves during braking, it must be adjusted, otherwise the brake pad is always attached to the rim and the wheel is breaking. Loosen the tension screw on both sides um, of the brake completely. If the tension screw come out of place, put it back in place and tighten it slightly. When you press the brake lever, only one of the brake arms move and the other is fixed. First, pull the arm that didn't move in the opposite direction and tighten the tension screw until the logo returns to its previous uh, position. Now, apply the brake lever several times. Do this if you need to. Now, the other arm just moves and uh, the other arm is attached to the ring. Now, slowly start unscrewing the tension screw 
and press the brake lever several times at the same time. Do this until both arms move together. Now both arms work together from the ring and are away from the ring. We do the same in the rear brakes. In some bikes, the braking system is similar and sometimes only the anchor bolt is different. Disc braking system is another type of braking system. In this brake model, instead of a brake pads, a disc is used, which has a better quality in terms of braking. As in the previous systems, we first tighten the barrel adjustment cable in the handle. We also tighten the lower barrel adjustment cable. Make sure there is a piece of plastic on it. To loosen or tighten it, we have to pull the plastic upward and then loosen or tighten it. Otherwise, the screw will not move. To adjust the brake cable, loosen the screw with a 5 or 6 mm Allen wrench. Then hold the brake cable and push the brake arms upwards. Then tighten the screw by the holding the brake arm. Activate the brake several times to see how it works. If you don't feel comfortable with the brake lever and it was too tight, you can repeat this operation and this time put the cable a little looser. Another brake model is the gyro brake system. To adjust the brake, as in previous model, it has a barrel adjustment cable, which we tighten to the end, but unlike previous model, its cable passed through the load handle and reached the brake arms. It's better that the cable is outside the fork and not inside the fork. The adjustment of the pants is exactly the same as the previous models. The rear brake system has a several barrel adjustment cables and uh, tension screw, which I think make the adjustment screw and the high curvature of the cable more difficult to break. To solve the problem, you can buy a normal bike cable and replace it with the, all the rear cables to make the braking system easier to operate. You don't need to change the brake arms and it's enough to change the brake cable. 
After the second barrel adjustment cable, the cable is divided into two parts and connected to the middle part of the brakes by two other barrel adjustment cable. If the cable is loose, you can adjust both barrel adjustment cable to the same size. In the lower part of the brake, we have two barrel adjustment cable. The two cables are then reconnected to the one cable by a barrel adjustment cable and finally connected to the brake arm by another barrel adjustment cable. I don't know why they use a more barrel adjustment cable. The pad settings are exactly the same as the previous model. Occasionally, you may hear a click as you turn the string wheel due to a misaligned brake pad. To remove the sound, simply move one of the barrel adjustment cable up or down and hear the uh, volume. If the click sound is louder, you must rotate it, the barrel adjustment cable in the opposite direction. Note that do this when both barrel adjustment cable are in the same direction. The next point is the screw that is located in the brake lever. If you pay attention, the children's hands are small and they uh, may have trouble holding the brake lever. You can reduce the distance between the brake lever and the handlebar so that they can hold the brake lever more easily. To do this, press the brake lever slightly and tighten the screw. When you release the brake lever, you will see that is closer to the lever. You can tighten the screw to the end and see where the brake lever is. Keep in mind that this will not affect the braking system. The next things I want to talk to you about the sound of the brake pads when braking. This sound has be, uh, can be heard from new or old bicycles. Okay, follow this step to clear the sound. The first, make sure that the not holding the pad in the firmly attached to the brake arm. If the sound doesn't go away, tighten the retaining knot on the each other as well as the returning knot on the entire brake system to the fork. If the sound doesn't go away, if you have a WD-40, a kind of oil, apply a small amount of pads on the both sides of the brake. You may say to yourself that this will cause the brake system to fail, but this is not the case. After using the W40, slow down and check the brake system several times. You will notice that the sound is removed and you are also able to apply the brakes. Then try a little faster to make sure that the bike brakes are working properly. If you do not have WD-40, you can use other oils, but I've not tried. So do it with more caution. If the sound doesn't go away, then you must change the brake pads even if the bike is new. Uh, the reason for the sound is the low 
quality of the break pad. I hope you find this video useful. Uh, if you enjoy it, please click the subscribe button and activate the bell. Share our channel with your friends. I know my English is not very good. I apologize. So, I just hope this video is useful.